What's up, guys? PC Amplified. Tuesday, April 4th, 2017. That's SmackDown post WrestleMania. That's in the books. Now we're going to talk about it. What a SmackDown, right? I mean, this shakeup kind of. I mean, it intrigues me, but it kind of scares me because SmackDown is already really legit and doesn't really need too much tweaks. Raw can only go up from here, right? Raw can only do better, I hope. I mean, I seriously doubt it can do much worse, right? Maybe I shouldn't say that. Raw could probably do even worse. Who knows? But SmackDown, really good. And they continued that, and that's good to see. Even after WrestleMania, it's good to see that creative is still using their juices. They, they didn't rest on their laurels to get to WrestleMania. They're still pulling out awesome content like last night. Um, AJ Styles came out during Shane McMahon's address of this shakeup, and AJ Styles says, I still owe you one, and he points to his black eye. But instead, he sticks out his hand, and him and Shane McMahon have a good handshake. And at one point, Shane McMahon gave him his props, and as AJ Styles was going up the ramp, you could read his lips, and he said, this is what I do. You earned my respect. That was really cool, man. Really cool to see AJ Styles and Shane McMahon have that moment. Because, again, in my opinion, they had the match of the night at WrestleMania. Um, and then you moved on to uh, just this match right here, man. Baron Corbin, Dean Ambrose, street fight. And I like how they had Baron Corbin issue the street fight to Dean Ambrose. Because I said all along, that's how you build up Baron Corbin. Make him this like street biker type guy, you know what I mean? Who's going to get into bar fights and street fights. So that's exactly how you build this motherfucker. And him and Ambrose, I said all along, if you put them in these type of matches, they're going to tear it up. Match of the night, easily. I mean, these, these guys went at it. There was leather straps. There was table spots. At one point, Baron Corbin chucked a chair right at fucking Ambrose's head when he was up on the, the turnbuckle. Just, uh, just a really good match. Uh, I wish I could have saw three, four, five more minutes of this match because uh, it was legit. That's the type of thing you should have probably had at WrestleMania. But... Nonetheless, SmackDown had it, and it was really good. Um, and you want to talk matches from WrestleMania? Naomi defended her championship against Alexa Bliss. Now, Naomi ended up winning that match legit clean. So maybe this means that Alexa Bliss is now officially out of the title picture, at least for now. Um, and that's the way it does look. Naomi looked really good, and she had another big Orlando moment. So that was really cool, because they were still in Orlando at the Amway Center. Um, now, as far as Alexa Bliss, kudos to you, because... Alexa Bliss finally put on a, a, a good match. I, I really enjoyed that match. Just like Ambrose and Corbin, I would have enjoyed another three, four, five minutes of that match. Uh, it was actually good. It, there, there was no cringe moments, man. It was, it was actually good. So Alexa Bliss has a lot to do with that. So she, she put on a really good match, and I expect that going forward. It just sucks that now it might be done with Alexa Bliss and Naomi, and they're just finally starting to hit their stride. But it is what it is. Um, you had the main event, which was, uh, who was it? Bray Wyatt and the returning Eric Rowan versus Luke Harper and Randy Orton. Now, Randy Orton ended up hitting the RKO on Eric Rowan and Luke Harper and Randy Orton win the match. Now, it was really weird because Eric Rowan just came back, man. And, and like, you just have him lose outright, right? When he comes, but you had nothing planned for him, nothing special. I love how they're giving Luke Harper a little bump up. SmackDown went off the air with Randy Orton on one uh, one buckle and you had Luke Harper on the other buckle. Luke Harper's pumping up the crowd. So that's cool. They're looking at Luke Harper now as one of their main stars. That's awesome. But I feel bad for Eric Rowan. I mean, I know he doesn't have the talent like Luke Harper, but again, he's been gone. Um, you could have had something planned for him when he comes back, something that's going to make him at least viable, something that's going to give him a chance to get over with the crowd. Instead, you put him, A, right back with Bray Wyatt. So he's just going, you know, he takes a step forward. You bring him two steps back. But not only do you put him back with Bray Wyatt, you have him lose outright his first match. Not good, man. I, I don't like that booking whatsoever. Um, but let's talk about the highlight moments, right? You guys got your Ty Dillinger. You guys know I'm not a big fan of Ty Dillinger, but I know you guys like him. So for that reason... I'm with you guys. You know, I'll be pumped for you. I, I don't like this whole 10-10 thing. When I show up to these live events, I'm not going to be screaming 10-10-10 because it just doesn't make no fucking sense to me. It's not as fun as the yes. The yes had meaning to it. Shouting 10 at everything? What, what the fuck is... Uh, most of what we're shouting 10 at is not a 10. It's like a fucking half a one. A half. Can we yell half? Half. What's half? Whatever the fuck. Um... But you guys like him, so hey, you got your moment, man. You got Ty Dillinger. He came out because Kurt Hawkins opened an issue, opened issued an open challenge, 
And uh, here comes Ty Dillinger, and he uh, he ends up beating Kurt Hawkins. There's a shocker. So really cool. I, I said in yesterday's video, I hope it wasn't too much of a spoiler, guys. I said Nakamura and Ty Dillinger were going to show up to, uh, last night, and they did. But um, Shinsuke Nakamura, guys, I got my moment, right? You guys got yours with Dillinger. I said all along, I, I get one of the questions I get asked the most, who's your favorite wrestler? I always say Shinsuke Nakamura, and I know a lot of you guys don't have the network and whatnot, so you're not familiar with his work, so you're always asking me about him. Now you guys finally get to see Shinsuke Nakamura, and even before NXT and, and his New Japan Pro Wrestling, hopefully you guys do your research, because this guy is the total fucking package. And every time I say total package, you guys come at me with, I don't know, this person doesn't have mic skills, BC, and the mic skills are not there, BC. Fuck mic skills, guys. This guy proved last night, he went in the center of the ring, got the biggest ovation of the night, and... And didn't say a fucking word. The Undertaker had zero mic skills. He was the biggest f phenomenon of fucking WWE history. Alright, so fuck your mic skills. If you're a rock star, you don't need mic skills in your total package. I said it last night with Sasha Banks uh, being the, the overall total package with the women. She don't need fucking mic skills. She's the total fucking package because she goes out there and whoops that ass. Daniel Bryan never had the total package with the mic skills, right? But he's the best fucking wrestler because he went out there and whooped ass and everyone cheered for him the loudest. That is a total package. All right, now I just realized that's highly disrespectful. I mean, I'm talking about the man himself and w without actually showing my props to him. So there is the man. Watch the theatrics on this, guys. For I'm mean, just fucking... Before he even wrestles, he has already captivated you. Almost like, hmm, The Undertaker, right? Almost like Demon Balor. Even more than Demon Balor in my book. Um, but... Shinsuke Nakamura, it's so tough when your favorite wrestler is a guy who's not even on the main roster of the main company, so a lot of people don't know what you're talking about when you mention Shinsuke Nakamura. So now hopefully a lot of people can learn more about him, Google him, YouTube him, New Japan Pro Wrestling, you're going to see why he reached the top of New Japan, you're going to see why he reached the top of NXT, and I promise you he's going to reach the top of SmackDown and WWE. It just sucks that... Him and AJ Styles are finally under the same roof, same locker room, same show. And this Monday, that could all change. I don't even think Vince McMahon knows what he's going to do Monday. So I think AJ Styles could definitely go to Raw, but there's even a possibility that Shinsuke can. But man, if these two can just stay on the same show, we might be able to see Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles. I promise you, it'll be the best wrestling match you've ever fucking seen. Because what they did in New Japan Pro Wrestling... That can be topped. I know both of these guys, and I know they can do a lot fucking better than even that. And that was even a good match. Great match. But they can do so much better, man. Shinsuke, AJ Styles. I hope they can stay on the same fucking brand. Um, that was SmackDown, man. Ty Dillinger. You guys got Ty Dillinger's fucking debut on the roster, aside from the Rumble. And I got Shinsuke Nakamura, finally. This is going to be fucking fun going forward. I want to get this shakeup done with so we can... You know what I mean? Just so we know what we have because I want to start setting up the feuds and the angles and the storylines for the future because now that we have Shinsuke Nakamura uh, ready to go, uh, it's, it's sky's the limit. The, the kind of matches this guy can go. I'll even take him versus fucking Orton. Take the strap from Orton if you got him, man. We'll have face versus face. But Shinsuke Nakamura has arrived. I'm fucking pumped. Can't wait to see what happens Monday, man. It's a shakeup for sure. BC Amplify, let's kick Wednesday's ass. Check you later.